We're live, everybody. Welcome to my channel. This is gonna be a real quick run through of how I've been doing uh, some sound design lately in Ableton Live. Uh, I'm gonna try to explain things as best I can, uh, why I'm making certain decisions and what my workflow is for the most part. Okay, so we're in the program. I've got my mic set up for my tutorial. The second channel is gonna be a ghost kick. <clears throat> which I'll use to sidechain compress certain things if I need it. I just have it there just in case. This is the video that I've found that I want to do some sound design to. I like it. Uh, it's got a couple different... I like the focusing elements. I like all of the pins coming in and coming out. I think we can do some cool stuff with that. Um, and then, of course, the logo reveal is right here at the very end. A lot of times when I get a graphic like this, I'm gonna line it up on my timeline and see if I can find a certain BPM that locks it into either a two measure phrase or a four measure phrase. So I've kind of already done that here. You can go and adjust the BPM to kind of shrink it or grow it depending on how you wanna work. If you wanna do two or you wanna do four. Um, but I found that 95.7 fits it into a four bar four bar phrase. After I fit it in to that certain constraint, I'll just kind of go through and find some interesting sounds that I like that I think might work for it. Um, so here I've got Spire pulled up. I've just got a random patch, random pad that I've Not much of the keyboard player. That's okay because I have an Ableton push. And if you have one, you're cheating too, but we can be friends because that's what I do. Um, so I've got I've got this pad pulled up. Also, another thing that I like to do, um, if the pad isn't inspiring me enough, I'll go through an auto filter onto my synth channel, no matter what synth you're using, and I'll just go ahead and automate automate the frequency just a little bit to give me something to play with while while I'm kind of demoing certain chords or progressions over the over the video. Um, and I'll pay attention to certain elements like right here when all the pins start to go away. Let's see, we can kind of dial it back. So like right here, the pins start to fall away from the center of the image until about right here. So I'll try I'll try to have the filters follow certain actions in the video. Uh, to me, that makes sense, that the frequency, the higher frequencies would come out more as the pins are flying towards you. And then as the logo reveals, I think I'll duck this back down, uh, whatever it's gonna be. Um, so I'll just come back through here and just mess around for a minute and see what kind of, um, see what kind of chords we can find that would sound good on this. Try to find like a starting point and a good ending point. Okay. And let me see if this lines up with the metronome too. Okay. Yeah, you can definitely end the final chord on the fourth bar. So let's see if we can find a beat in here with the chords that I just came up with. Socratic! I like that. That's a cool logo. I like the pins and stuff. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and record some of that in there. Let's see. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, I hit everything I wanted to hit except for that bass note. So I'm gonna go back in here and I'm gonna add that lower note. Where is it at? Let's see. There we go. It's right here. Wherever that is, let's find it. Okay. And if you didn't notice, as I'm pressing keys either on the keyboard or on the push, it's gonna show up in your piano roll. So let's see, we got a G. We got a G like right here. And I want that low note to to really fill out that bottom end, so I'm gonna hold 
command to adjust the velocity and I can bring it up, make it a little bit darker. Let's see what that sounds like. Okay, that's pretty cool. Maybe in this, I think this might be worth changing this chord. I think that check and make sure the resonance isn't turned up on the filter because that'll make it super piercing. I don't know. It's almost it's almost losing some fidelity right there for some reason. Let's see. comes down too far right there and disappears too much. So I'm bring that point up. Okay. <clears throat> uh, something I'll do a lot, um, and especially in sound design types of, of applications, even when I'm Even even when I'm just making a song, I'll go through. Well, actually, I did that wrong. Hang on, let me unfreeze that. I need to duplicate it. Free. Freeze it, flatten it. <clears throat> so I just have the audio right here. A lot of times I'll use this. Um. For extra, extra effects, sometimes I'll use it as a. There's a uplifter type of thing. Let's see what we got here. Okay. Let's see what that is. Sometimes it's fun if you detune it a little bit. Makes your song complex. Oh, yeah. Swimmingly. That just sounds fantastic. Let's see. Well, I'm going to catch it after that big build, and then we'll let it drop. Let it drop off right before the logo reveal um, on the fourth measure. Let's see what that sounds like. Then you know what I might want is to pull this all the way around. All right, let me change my grid. This is annoying. Maybe not quite that big. Right now it works. Okay, so I've got that swell. I've got the beginning part that's kind of crazy. And then I want to put this swell. Right here at the logo reveal. So let's see what that sounds like. That's gonna add some lower frequencies um, back in there. too long what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slice this to a MIDI track because I'm tired of dealing with it let's do half notes and let's just delete it because nobody cares about that shit. Ah, let's delete that too Fuck it uh so now I can play the sections that I want Good thing to always try to remember to do is to turn the volume up on these slices. Um, after you do that, go to copy value to siblings. So now all these are going to be turned up because if you don't, then they're just super, super, super low. Let's see here. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
All right. There it is. All I was doing there was going through and trying to make these slices a little bit more precise as far as what chords they were using um, or what chords were playing inside of the slices so that I can play it a little bit easier. We don't need that. Okay, there it is. You know what didn't happen? Or I don't think happened? Uh, I don't think I detuned it. So let's transpose this down. 12, copy to siblings. Uh, yeah. All right, let's see. I'm just playing around right here. Don't like the grand delay right there, but I am. Duplicate! Let's come down here. I want to catch this last note. And I want to make it. Let's see. Forget you. Uh, crop. That's what I want to do. Okay. This is going to be. Bam. So I want to automate the pitch, drop this down to its own automation lane. Um, so fuck it, let's start an octave down. And let's come up. Let's see. Coming up, coming up, coming up. Waiting for the logo, waiting for the logo. Okay, I'll move this back a little bit. Let's see what that sounds like. See what kind of EQ we're working with here. I don't want any crap below about 70, but I want to give it some more low end. I could always compress it just a little bit. Actually, you know what? I like the uh, I like the glue compressor better. <clears throat> and for the sake of expediency here, let's just loop the end of the phrase. sparkle right there at the end so how we're gonna do that is i'm gonna go in here i'm gonna grab nexus if you don't have it you should find it you should buy it i know it's kind of expensive but you should buy things that you love um so i want Too much, too bouncy. 
like that, too pad-like, and he's something a little more pokey. Oh yeah, Dr. Chaotica, you got it for me right there, buddy. Let's see. That's something else I like to do with sound design is I like to try to count out the syllables <clears throat> in the logo name. So for here, Socratic, I'm guessing that's how you say that. That's three. I'm going to try to add three, three notes at the end in pace with everything else. Uh, let's just loop the second half of this. I like that one. So Patrick. Just go ahead and record that. Forget it. Okay, so we kind of caught the pace of it without putting any rigid drums or anything in there. Um, but you can see how lining the, lining it up to the grid <clears throat> kind of helps you pace everything. Hopefully the actions within the animation line up with, you know, a two or a four or a one or a three. And if they don't, then you can kind of adjust depending on the logo reveal and what else is going on. Or, I mean, you don't even have to use a BPM. There's plenty of times where I've gone through and just played things that made sense at the times that they made sense. Of course, if it's not musical, if you're not making anything very musical, then it, it's completely irrelevant almost. But for me, I like to find a BPM that makes sense and try to structure everything around that. So this is what we have so far. This is way, way, way too loud. Soften it a little bit, bring out some of those, take off some of those highs, lower it down quite a bit. Let's see. All that delay. So in fact, you know what? Let's just turn it off. Let's do our own thing. Okay. A tip I'll give you: uh, when you're making a fade like this, you can hold Option, click and drag, and it'll give you a nice little. Um, Fade curve, volume curve. Well, here we are. I think we're pretty much done with this one. Let's go back and watch it one more time just to watch and see how everything lines up. That's the one. That's the one. We did it. We did it. We did it, everybody. Made it. I knew we could do it. I really did. I knew it. I knew we could do it. I knew we could do it. <laughs> Bounce this out. Throw it in the bin. That's another one we got in there. Thank you for tuning in. See y'all next time. Peace.